All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our second polar graphing practice problem. Sketch r equals 2 minus sine theta. So let's go ahead and draw out that reference graph. Now notice a couple of things here. We have a vertical shift of 2. I'm dealing with negative sine theta. And, well that's it for now. Let's go ahead and take a look. I want to draw my axis all the way from 0 to 2 pi. I have no uh, horizontal shift in sign. I don't have any period change in sign. So we're going to go ahead and mark our normal spots. Now I have that a vertical shift of 2 and because I don't have any amplitude change in sine that means I need to go all the way up to 3. You might say well I'm subtracting sine so I shouldn't but just remember sine can be negative 1 as well so I am going to need to go all the way up to 3 I have 2 and 1 and that should be all I need my new horizontal axis is at 2 and so I'm not going to go anywhere negative so this is a type that we haven't done yet. We've talked about it, but we haven't done yet. Um, this is of the form a plus or minus b sine theta. And remember when we have an a greater than a b, that's where we have a dimpled limason. So let's go ahead and draw out our sine graph. We have these key values of 0 at 0 pi and 2 pi. That's where we're going to cross that horizontal axis. I'm going down first because I have negative sine and then I'm going back up. So There we go, there's our reference graph. Let's go ahead and draw that polar axis. We'll draw that polar axis line going out to the right. Now I need to mark my polar axis out to 3. Let's say 1, 2, 3. And our key values that we're going to need are 1, 2, and 3. So let me go ahead and make some of these overlay circles for us to use. Now you don't need to draw circles at home uh, to figure out where these are. Just remember that when you're dealing with an R, you kind of follow it around in a circle to figure out where R equals that number. This little one, this middle one looks a little off, but I think it's close enough we'll be okay. And let's draw a couple reference lines as well. Oh. We don't need anything smaller than pi over 2 here because that's what we're dealing with. So I'm going to be going, as I go from angle 0 to angle pi over 2, I'm moving from 2 to 1. Now it's not too apparent, but I'll be going to 1 faster at the beginning and then I kind of slow down. So let's go ahead and draw that in. From 0 to pi over 2, I'm going from 2 to 1. From pi over 2 to pi, I'm going from 1 to 2. And we should kind of expect this. All right, we know that because we're dealing with sine, we are symmetric across that theta equals pi over 2 line, aren't we? Uh, this vertical line right here. So whatever we have on the left and right should look the same. Now let's go pi to 3 pi over 2. So here I'm going from 2 to 3. So I'm going to keep kind of going outwards from here at pi all the way to 3. And then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, I'm going from 3 back to 2. My lines could be a little smoother, but I think we'll be able to see the shape here once I take away these circles. So here we go. So it looks almost like a circle. Um, these aren't quite so smooth as they should be with my little shaky hand here. But this is my dimple right here. It's a very light dimple. It's out there a lot. This is our dimpled limason. 
So this is the type whenever we have A is greater than B. So it dips in right here. And remember the only difference between this and a cardioid is a cardioid dimples at the origin. That dimple actually touches the origin and then goes back out. A dimpled limason, the only difference is that dimple happens further out away from the origin and we don't actually touch the origin at all. Alright, now that's it for this example. We're going to do one more example in the next video. We'll see you then.